hi, uh, hello. <laughs> I don't really know how to do this anymore. And honestly, like, I sat down to film this without really a game plan of what was going on. Sorry, I'm like a little bit on the struggle bus. I think I have either flu or RSV. So this is probably not the best time to have picked to have made this video. And yet for the first time in months, I was like, you know what, let's do this. I guess the purpose of this sort of like all over the place flim flam video is that I want to start making regular videos for the channel again. But I feel like it would be weird if after like months of not giving you any content, I were just to like suddenly drop a video about here are all the blushes I own or whatever. Because essentially, like if we want to use a metaphor to understand the situation, it's like you and I were in a text message conversation and then you sent a text message six months ago and then I like never read it. And then suddenly one day I just woke up and decided that I was going to resume our previous conversation with like absolutely no context or explanation. And that's weird and rude. And I would not do that in a text conversation. I would definitely give you an explanation for why I ghosted you for like six months. This video is that explanation and a little bit of an update on what's going on with my life for whoever is still lingering around this channel, I guess. But yeah, drop the intro. <laughs> So I guess the way that maybe I should start is by going over some broad strokes, cool things that have happened in my life since we last saw each other several months ago. <laughs> so I went to Kenya. Kenya was my first major sort of international trip to a country that is not what I would consider to be one of my home countries. I went for work and our team over there is amazing and I had such a great time. We were in Nairobi and Nakuru, and then I took a couple of days off to travel with my coworker to Masai Mara and just had the most incredible time. I'm gonna see if I can insert some of the pictures from the incredible safaris that I was on while I was there. So not just Masai Mara, but also Lake Naivasha, as well as Nakuru, which um, we visited like twice because we were literally working in that area for almost the entire time that we were there. As well as Nairobi National Park actually, which was a very cool and surreal experience because it's like right next to Nairobi city proper. So you'd be seeing like lions and giraffes in the wild, but with like a city skyline in the background. And at one point I think I took a picture of like three rhinos walking into the distance and there's like a freeway in the background, you know? So, so it was a lot of fun and I'm focusing more on, I guess like the wildlife than the people right now because I don't wanna like disrupt people's privacy. But on the whole, it was just such an incredible experience. And I'm so grateful to all of the people that we work with in Kenya for being just like such an amazing team. I came back from that work trip just like rejuvenated in a sense of purpose for everything that I'm doing at my job. But yeah, so there was that happening sort of in July and a chunk of August. And as a side note, when I was in Kenya, we were working in some pretty rural parts of Nakuru County. And so I didn't really have the greatest Wi-Fi. And for the entire time that I was there, even though I was like editing some of the videos that were on like the external USB drive that I took with me, there was absolutely no way in hell that the flimsy Wi-Fi connection that I sometimes had access to would allow me to upload like a 40 minute video. So I was like, whatever, forget this. Like we're tabling this. I'll figure it out when I get back. And then when I got back, because I had like taken a vacation as well and like a bunch of projects I was on were like hitting the ground running, then suddenly work was just like batshit insane. And I was also, if we're gonna be honest, like not doing too hot. I like don't know how to explain it. When I'm like around my family, there is a certain level of faking fineness, like faking being fine that I just very naturally slip into because I just, I don't want to worry anybody. I don't know if y'all are like that, where it's like, even when your mental illness, the big D is like really acting up, there are some people around whom you are just able to sort of shut it down and be like, I'm fine, we're all good, like everything's okay. Not because they're like people you can't talk to, but just because I was having a lot of issues admitting to myself that I was not feeling too hot. There was definitely a period where because I was like catching up, I was too busy to focus on anything except for work. Like it really, I think, kept me from spiraling out more than I would have. But I genuinely just was not doing too hot. And I, I can't really 
give you that much of an explanation why. Like sometimes I feel like when I'm not doing too hot, there are some very clear reasons why I'm not doing too hot. And sometimes it's like, well, everything in my life is going well. So I don't know what the heck is going on and like why I am not feeling that great. But yeah, so it was like a confluence of like one, I was like not feeling too hot to begin with. And then on top of that, I was like really, really busy. And obviously like YouTube's not my job, right? This is like a fun hobby I do on the side. And I have like a real job that I have to do in order to one, like get paid and two, to like not be kicked out of the country because like casual reminder that um, my visa to stay in the United States is like intricately tied to my job. So if I get fired from this job, like I got to leave this country and go back to Canada. So it was like a lot of pressure on me to just like catch up, excel, do well at work to just sort of back burner everything else, including honestly, like my own mental and physical health for like a while. I had gained a lot of weight last year and I was like working on my health and fitness and I had begun sort of like getting stronger and losing some of that extra weight that like really made my knees and ankles hurt. And unfortunately, because I was just like not doing too hot and I was also really, really stressed out, like all of that work got negated and I was back to just really not prioritizing any aspect of my health, whether it was sleep or the kind of food that I eat or making sure that I like exercise and move my body around instead of just like being a sedentary person. And I guess like an added layer of stress was that like my sister was getting married in October and doing all of that sort of like planning and coordinative work and checking in with her and all that kind of stuff, that felt to me like a second job after my actual job, right? It was either I was at like my actual job all day and sometimes long past 5 p.m. because I was like trying to make sure everything that needed to get done got done. And then like after I was finished doing my like proper paid job, every sort of spare moment that I had, it was like, okay, how's the wedding planning going? What do we need to do? What do you need me to get done? What do you need to get done? And you should to like get married, et cetera, et cetera. Fortunately, the wedding went off brilliantly. I'm gonna see if I can like put up some photos of me at all of the various fun events with all of my different like outfits and makeup looks and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it was genuinely like a very fun event. It was so stressful <laughs> leading up to it. Like, like my mom and I arrived in Toronto a week before the wedding was supposed to happen so that we could help my sister out. And let me tell you, like there were like three or four days in a row where I was working a full nine hours and then immediately going to my brother-in-law's house to sit down and work another eight to nine hours till like three in the morning, finalizing signs and seating charts and all of this kind of stuff. So it was extremely hectic. It was super stressful, but we had such a great fun time. And I can't believe my older sister's married. Like that is still a thing that I'm trying to process. So that happened and it was incredible. And then we had family who had come all the way from Nepal. And because they traveled all this way, we decided, you know, like the four or five days of the wedding is not enough. Like we should definitely explore Canada a little bit more. And none of us had ever been to Quebec. So we just took an incredible drive up from Toronto. Uh, we spent a couple days in this bonkers Airbnb in this tiny little town called La Mar Bay where we did some whale watching. We saw like a huge population of beluga. We saw, um, I think it was a humpback. It was really incredible. Like I think the three days that we spent in the La Malbe Tadoussac region was just like, I will never forget that experience in my whole life. It, it was peak autumn in Quebec at that point in time. And so it was just, it was the most beautiful scenery that we've ever seen on our drive up there and back. And then on our way back, we also went to Quebec City and we stayed in old Quebec and that was stunning in and of itself. And then we also went to Montreal and we stayed near old Montreal. And that was also a lot of fun. Like I had never been, despite the fact that I've lived in Canada for like 10 years, I'd never actually been to either Montreal or Quebec or anywhere really outside of like the Southern Ontario, Toronto area. So that was so much fun. It was like really incredible. I really enjoyed it. And it was really nice to sort of decompress after the hecticness of the wedding with family. Unfortunately, when I got back from the family trip, I got the Rona. So, you know, that wasn't too hot, but thankfully I think because I was vaccinated, it was still like a pretty mild case. I had like no fever, but I had like four or five days where I was really fatigued. And then after that, I was like totally fine. So at this point, right, my sister's wedding happens in sort of like 
early October, we go to Montreal up to like mid October. And then I get the Rona. And then we're pretty much in like the last week of October. It was at this point that the thing which prevented me from making a YouTube video was no longer my mental health. There were so many decisions that I had put off till after my sister's wedding because I just like didn't have the space for them. And once it was all finally done and I'd recovered from the Rona, I was like, okay, it's it's time to get serious about the priorities in my life for real. So I joined a gym on the 1st of November, like I've been going pretty regularly. There's a bunch of like GRE books right over there that I've started studying for because I've gotten really serious about my plan to go to graduate school and I want to apply like next autumn so that I get in in 2024. October of 2022 actually marked my one year anniversary of having started working in public health. And so I like had a check in like an annual review with my boss and then my boss's boss, like the head of the center that I work at. And they were both really, really happy about my performance. But they also kind of asked me, you know, like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you hope to accomplish? What are your long term goals? And that's when I told them, you know, like, I think I want to go to grad school. And so then I really kind of like I sat down with my boss, we like worked out a plan for how I a person without a scientific background, like my undergraduate degree is technically in liberal arts, it's a Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and Latin American Studies. Like, how can I get to the point where I get accepted into the GDEC program at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, which is one of the more technical and scientific public health programs that they have. And I think sort of like having those meetings, having a new set of goals to work towards, putting a new structure and schedule back into my life. I think that honestly did more to help my mental health than a lot of other things. I also think honestly, like the burden of not having to think about the wedding anymore, that was a big stressor that was lifted from my life. And so honestly, that was also probably a very big factor in making me feel better. So yeah, like by the first week of November, I was sort of like getting my life together. I was figuring out like what all I needed to do to, to progress. I felt better in terms of like my sense of structure. But then suddenly shame kicked in <laughs> because, and here's what I've left out of the story so far. When I was not feeling too hot in like summer of 2022, a lot of the sort of healthy coping coping mechanisms that I had developed to manage my life, I like wasn't engaging in them. I didn't have the time to go to the gym. I didn't really have the time to like engage in a lot of the hobbies I usually engage in to get my mind off of stuff. I didn't have the bandwidth to do things like read or draw or all of the other things that I do. And so to make myself feel better, I started buying shit. Basically in like July of 2022, in the ramp up to my Kenya trip, I broke my no buy. I just sort of like caved and I bought a bunch of I think it was like Lisa Eldridge lipsticks because I was just having a shit day and she had released a bunch of new lipsticks. And then it was like the floodgates opening. One of the not very great, not very helpful mindsets that I often find myself engaging in is the all or nothing mindset, right? This idea that like either you do a thing perfectly or you just like don't do it at all it's a form of perfectionism that's honestly like very very crippling because there are very few things in life that actually are all or nothing but unfortunately it kicked in full force when i broke my no buy by ordering some lipsticks off of lisa eldridge's website because then from like july onward i was like fuck it. You know, like I have already like broken my no buy. So what is the point? Like just buy whatever you want. So then whenever I was feeling like not too hot, I was just buying shit. Was it my finest moment? Like no. But was I truly on the struggle bus? And as my hoodie suggests, really just trying my best? Yeah. So <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about it. Because it's like it was not a healthy coping mechanism. I didn't like that I was doing it. And yet, like I was engaging in that sort of very self destructive behavior, right? I was like, forget about paying my student loans back more than I need to pay them back. I feel like garbage, I'm just gonna buy some stuff. That's that on that. And so layered on top of like all of the sort of busyness and the lack of time and space to like engage in a hobby, 
was also this sort of layer of like shame. Like, how am I going to come back to you guys? Especially after I had a year where I did a full no buy year that was like super successful. It was amazing. Like, I learned so much from it. I like documented that whole process, all of that kind of stuff. Like, how do I come back after that? and be like, yeah, so I caved like a little baby. And I feel really embarrassed about that. But I'm gonna like sit here in my embarrassment instead of like running away from it. I did not have the guts to do that for I think a very, very long time. I didn't have the guts to just be like, yeah, like I, I folded like a house of cards, I fell off the wagon. It was embarrassing. I am ashamed. But instead of like sitting and wallowing in that shame and continuing in sort of self-destructive behavior, I'm going to just be like, you know what? You had six months of a great no buy and like you've done this before. You can do this again. Like pick yourself back up off the ground, recommit to this thing if it matters to you. And if it doesn't, then acknowledge that and let it go. But stop just like basting yourself in the guilt of it all and like do something about it. And November is the month where I've really been getting my house in order. I've begun physically putting my house in order, but I've also been putting like my mental house in order. And this was one of the things that I wanted to put into order, right? Like this channel and the way that I left it, my no buy and the way that I left it, my student loan debt and the way that I left it. Cause side note, I don't know if I made it clear, my like minimum payments for my student loan have still been happening, but like I have not been putting payments on top of that the way that I said that I would do, right? So it was like, I was failing on multiple promises that I had made, one, not to buy things. And then two, the commitment I had made that I would like, pay $24,000 of my student loan by the end of this year, which by the way, now is a financial impossibility because there's like one month left in the year. As I was sort of like getting my priorities in order of like, hey, you're gonna go start going to the gym and like moving your body and you're gonna eat less sugar because you've been just uncontrollably binging on that shit. And you are also going to like start studying for the GRE because you like know what you wanna do with your life now and this is the next step to getting you to that goal a major priority for me is actually being able to pay down my student loan debt. So like logging back into the account that like lists all of my totals and stuff, seeing that number again, like getting myself reacquainted with everything, and then choosing to come back on here for like a little bit of an accountability and explanation. That is what has been happening the last like few weeks in November. And I think spending Thanksgiving with some of my family members who are like really ambitious people as well. My cousin, her husband and my baby nephew, like they all came over for Thanksgiving. And my cousin is like an incredibly high achieving, ambitious woman. She has like a PhD in biotech. And she's also had some like really intense mental health struggles, but she's figured out how to manage them and still be a really successful person in life. And so I think like being around her, being around her husband, who is also similarly like a very focused individual who like unfortunately like was laid off earlier this year but he like got his shit together he got a new job and in the process he also like figured out what it was he really wanted to do I think spending some time around them and also my cute little baby nephew who is just like out here discovering the world for the first time like every small thing in the world amazes him and excites him seeing that sort of like baby joy was I think also very very useful to just remind me that like bitch you are alive like you are here doing relatively okay in the like grand scale of the world like that is a privilege and a joy and there are so many more sort of like lovely things in the world than miserable things in the world and it's time to sort of like work on yourself so that you can be one of the lovely things in the world instead of one of the miserable things in the world you know so that I think was like the final shove to me to be like, yeah, like pick it back up, be accountable to yourself by making this video, even if like nobody else is still out there watching, like recommit to the things that matter to you. And the thing that is a priority for me more than just the no buy year is quite frankly, like my student loan. So I think the commitment that I framed in my head now is that from today up until I have paid my student loan off in full, I am on a replacement only no buy year, right? So initially I was like, oh, it'll just be till the end of this year, blah, 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 I'll focus or whatever. But the thing I realized is like, actually, no, the priority is my loan. And so till that loan gets paid off, like I should be putting as much money as I can towards that loan and not be like buying a bunch of shit, right? Because I have seen over the past few months just how destructive my allowing myself to buy a bunch of stuff and choosing to buy a bunch of stuff 
was to me putting money toward my student loan. I did KonMari my entire like makeup collection so that it would properly fit in the drawers that I have assigned for my makeup because they were not fitting in the drawers that I had assigned for my makeup. They have not been fitting in the drawers that I assigned for my makeup like ever since I moved here. So I did that full decluttering process. I like did not record any of it because I just wanted to do it. And I think I, I want to make a video a little bit like talking about that process and talking about some like significant items that I decluttered and my feelings around them and kind of like what I learned from that process, etc. Um, so I know that video is definitely coming up. And I'm also going to start posting a couple like reviews of books that I've read. I also might post like one short video updating you on like fountain pen and ink content and also probably just some like videos about whatever the hell I want because it's my channel. <laughs> You know, like, I might just post a video, like, ranting about some shit. Like, Bill Maher is getting on my last nerve. Like, Bill Maher, for those of you who don't know, is a very, very annoying American... Is he a comedian? Does he count? Is he just, like, a personality? I don't know. He has some sort of a show. And he was recently talking about how, like, there's this theory in history there's this idea called presentism which means that we judge the behavior of people in the past based off of the standards in the present and it's like not super useful necessarily to do that right it's like a thing to be aware that you're doing and Bill Maher basically like quotes some scholar who like totally twists it around and says that we shouldn't critique people like George Washington or Thomas Jefferson for owning slaves because like that was just a thing that people did in the time and we can't impose the morals of today on people in the past. And I'm like, this idea that like people did not know slavery was wrong until like 1860 whatever in the United States is just patently false. At the time that like Thomas Jefferson was writing the Declaration of Independence and actively owning people and saying all men are created equal, there were people advocating for the abolition of slavery, right? Black slaves have always known that slavery was wrong. Free black men were all the time advocating for the abolition of slavery. And there were lots of white people who were also advocating for the abolition of slavery. Jefferson, Washington, a bunch of these slave owners kept publishing defenses of slavery. They would write arguments in defense of slavery. And you got to ask yourself, why would you write arguments in defense of something if there wasn't another side attacking it, right? George Washington and Jefferson and all of these other founding fathers had contemporaries people of that same time and age who thought that slavery was gross and that we should not engage in that behavior, right? So it's not like arguing from the morality of the present to say that, hey, like slavery was maybe wrong and we should examine how much we idolize some of these people when the fact is that they owned other human beings and believed them to be subhuman. Because the reality is not every single person who lived in that time held such noxious and toxic beliefs. And there were people who thought black people are actual human beings, not subhuman. Slavery as a practice is morally wrong. And they were actively challenging slave owners all the time. The entire notion that people just woke up one day in like 1953 and were like, I think women are human beings who deserve rights. And I think maybe civil rights is like a thing that we should be doing for like black folks and other folks of color. It is a farce. People did not wake up one day and decide that like slavery was wrong. People knew the whole time that slavery was wrong. Some people did, and they argued very fiercely for it, and some people didn't. And so we should judge people as products of their time. As products of their time, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Christopher Columbus were moral failures because there were people in that time who did not hold the reprehensible morals that they did. Point blank period. People really like to forget that the Haitian Revolution happened in like, was it 1803, 1805? 1810, it was like in the first decade of the 1800s that black people in Haiti were like, dude, slavery is super wrong. I want some of that French revolutionary energy for myself. 
fuck all of y'all. And they have led a violent revolution. They overthrew all of their masters. They, they declared Haiti the first free independent state where slavery was illegal. And they did this within 25 years of the creation of the US Constitution, which codified slavery, and at least 50 years before Americans abolished the Civil War. And all of the European countries and the white people in the United States were so panicked about the Haitian Revolution that they cracked down extra hard on slavery in the United States in particular. So people of that time knew that slavery was wrong and bad. Same argument, by the way, applies for colonialism and imperialism. Lots of people of that time knew that the behavior that went into colonialism and imperialism was bad and wrong. It boggles my mind that people think that like codes of ethics and morality and all this kind of stuff like did not exist uh, until like a hundred years ago. Like be serious, be fucking serious. <sighs> anyway. This video has gotten away from me. I don't know why I just spent so long talking about this issue on a tangent on a video that was supposed to be a life update, but that is the Prachi story. <laughs> you start a conversation one way and you end like way down somewhere else on some other tangent. As a side note, one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to take a moment to plug my Instagram here. I'm also going to post it down below. Um, I infrequently will post on there with like, fun photos of what I'm doing in my life, including like stories and stuff. This is my personal Instagram. It's not a beauty Instagram because I don't have one of those, but I'm mostly just posting it because on the off chance that something happens and I go ghost again, like if you would like to follow me there, you can at least have reassurance that I am like alive <laughs> and doing things. Um, and also if you'd like to see like more fun photos of like my sister's wedding and my Kenya trips, etc. Like I haven't really posted that on Instagram yet because I haven't had time to like sort through all of my million photos. But that is a thing that I'm planning on doing in December now that I have like a little bit more time to breathe. So if you would be interested in seeing like fun updates from my life and what not, uh, I'm just going to post my Instagram down below feel free to follow me on there and drop a hi in my DMs so that like I know you came from here and I can follow you back. So that's basically it for me as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so so much for watching if you are still somehow here and have stuck around. Um, as always have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you around. Bye!